So I was really excited about um, this last weekend. First of all, like, I feel like as Neil is taking over the church, and obviously Mike as his right-hand man, I feel like we're in really good hands, you know? Um, like, I don't know, what is this now? He was, like, initiated two, two weekends ago, and now first weekend on the scene, it's like, hey, the whole nation is watching us, you know, on this court case for the preschool, and that's crazy, right, that we're suing the government, you know, and um, pray for that, by the way. And then in the same service, Mike gets up and he's like, oh, by the way, we're going to go to the YMCA on Wednesday and we're going to protest. And then, you know, we got the abortion thing going on. I just, I just feel like, I hope you guys are grateful for your pastoral staff. They're warriors, dude. You know, they're not going to, like, shy away from a fight. And that's how Mark and Dave and the staff have been for the last 30 years. And, and that's how the rest of them are, you know. That's how Mike and Neil, that's how David is. Uh, John, I'm, I'm not going to be able to name everybody right now. I'm so sorry. Anybody I forgot. But they really are down to stand for the truth um, no matter what the cost. Um, you know, I really think these guys would lay down their life for Jesus. And uh, anyway, so I'm excited about that. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. I was filled with hope because we're singing, and it says, you're my hope in the shadows, right? Um, during that song, Worthy of Your Name. And this whole entire day, I've just been thinking about all the shadows because I'm preparing for this Bible study that I'm about to give you. And talking about the shadows um, is necessary for propelling us into this thing. So I've just been meditating on it so much, and it's been really <laughs> like not healthy. And so during that worship time where it says, you're my hope in the shadows, I felt like the light of the Holy Spirit just crashed in and just filled me up with faith. I really got stirred during that moment. So I appreciate you know, the Holy Spirit, and I guess Matt Graham for picking that song. But I have here Psalm 73, and you could go ahead and start, you could put it up there. I'm going to read just the entire chapter of Psalm 73 to start us off. This is King David in a similar position that we are all in, where we're Christians, and we're trying to follow Jesus, and we're trying to stand for righteousness, but it seems like darkness is, like, rampant. We've got Full-grown men in the girls' locker room, like somebody, you know, it's crazy. And so here is a psalm that came out of David's heart as he was reflecting on that. And you kind of notice halfway through the psalm, his attitude changes, and that's kind of where we're going to be focusing. So um, you guys want to, like, do something kind of fun and, like, tag team read? Can I get some volunteers to read because it's actually kind of long? Okay, and, then, and then we'll just, like, soak it in. Who wants to read? Somebody raise your hand. Come on, where are the, where are the, okay, we'll start with you. Start reading and then um, read one slide at a time. When that slide's done, we'll read another slide, we'll pass it off. Sound good? Slide. Yeah, read the whole slide. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Truly God is good to Israel, to those who are pure in heart, but as for me, <laughs> my feet came close to stumbling. <laughs> my steps are normal. Try to take it straight. I'll read this one. Therefore, pride is their necklace. The garment of violence covers them. Their eye bulges from fatness. The imaginations of their heart run riot. They mock and wickedly speak of oppression. They speak from on high. They have set their mouth against the heavens, and their tongue parades through the earth. Therefore, his people return to this place. Matrenga. And waters of abundance are drunk by them. They say, how does God know? And is there knowledge with the Most High? Behold, these are the wicked, and always at ease they have increased in wealth. Surely in vain I have kept my heart pure and washed my hands in innocence. For I have been stricken all day long and chastened every morning. If I had said, I will speak thus, behold, I would have betrayed the generation of your children. When I pondered to understand this, it was troublesome in my sight until I came into the sanctuary of God. And so here he paints a picture of, um, basically in a nutshell, the wicked are succeeding all around him. 
And not only are the wicked succeeding, it's like they're getting all the money, they're getting all of the favor, and it's, it's almost like the way that the political landscape was set up was to favor the wicked. Like those that were gonna lie and cheat and steal, they were the ones who were succeeding. And we see that now in our nation. We see that if you, the ones who are like really getting propelled to the top are the people who are down to backbite, who are down to lie, cheat, and steal, and um, hurt anybody to get what they want. And so he's meditating on this, and, he's, um, and he is crushed by it. And then something changes. It says, then I, pers- wait, 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 it was troublesome in my sight until I came into the sanctuary of God. And so he comes into the sanctuary of God, and then from there, then I perceive their end. Surely you set them in slippery places. You cast them down to destruction, how they are destroyed in a moment. So there was something that happened here. He came into the sanctuary of God. He came into the presence of God. And in that moment of being in God's presence, he gets revelation from God about what actually is going to happen to these guys. Like right now, they're succeeding in the land, but the end is apparent because of the time he spent in God's presence. Um, I'll just finish reading. They are utterly swept away. I can't see that so good. They are utterly swept away by sudden terrors, like a dream when one awakes. O Lord, when aroused, you will despise their form. When my heart was embittered and I was, and I was pierced within, then I was senseless and ignorant. I was like a beast before you. Nevertheless, I am continually with you, and you have taken hold of my right hand. With your counsel, you will guide me, and afterward receive me to glory." Whom have I in heaven but you? And besides you, I desire nothing on earth. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For behold, those who are far from you will perish. You have destroyed all those who are unfaithful to you. But as for me, the nearness of God is my good. I have made the Lord my refuge that I may tell of all your works." And so he sees all of the darkness, and his hope didn't become in his ability to fight these people and win. His hope came from his sense of God's presence and the revelation that he received from the Lord in a time of pursuing him. Um, Now I'm going to kind of switch gears a little bit. Um, There's this guy, Brother Lawrence. You guys heard of Brother Lawrence? How many of you guys read any Brother Lawrence stuff? Oh my gosh. Who's, who has not heard of Brother Lawrence? Indeed, you must. Okay. I will share a little bit more about Brother Lawrence. But he is this regular guy who um, came from maybe sort of poor family, and he tried to go to school to become a priest, but he didn't have enough money for school. He went to go try and become a priest anyway. They wouldn't let him because he didn't have money for it. And so instead of him becoming a priest, he ended up just doing the dishes, okay? And so he worked doing the dishes for years and years and years and years. And then at a certain point, he got promoted to repairing shoes, okay? And so he spent the rest of his career repairing shoes. He was a a busboy, and then he repaired shoes. But over the course of his life, because of the peace that he expressed and because of the wisdom that he expressed, he had countless people from all across the world come and visit him to sit and talk with him. Um, He never wrote a book. People were always asking him to write a book, but instead what he had was letters that he would write to people who were asking his wisdom. And so there was this guy, I forgot his name, but he went and compiled all of those letters that he found from all of these people, and he put it together in a book, and uh, um, and it ended up being just Brother Lawrence's meditations on the presence of God. And Brother Lawrence, being such an average, normal person in a world at that time that was nuts, he had extreme peace. He had a kind of peace that was so, that was so amazing and so pure that he had many hundreds of people come to see, even high-level people like um, like political figures and famous people would come to see him. And um, there's just something different, different about people 
who are in the presence of God. You can, be, you can live the most ordinary life in the midst of a crazy time, but you can be a light that many people come to. Um, and for the rest of this time, I want to talk, um, I kind of titled this message, Walking Closely with Jesus. The Bible says, many are called, few are chosen. Many are called, few are chosen. So the message of the gospel goes out to many, many people. But there only are a few that respond to the gospel in the way that it ought to have been responded to, and therefore, God chooses them. And he chooses them not just to go to heaven. I don't think it's a go to heaven thing, but it is a, he chooses them for a deep fellowship. And this deep fellowship is the kind of fellowship that will transform whatever situation you're in, whatever kind of family you come from, whatever kind of job you work, it will transform that. It's the nearness of God. And, um, you know, when you walk, I totally mixed up my notes. The blessings of walking closely with Jesus. So this is the kind of stuff that happens real quick. When you walk close with Jesus and you have his presence, number one, this is what happens, and this was what drew, drew people to Brother Lawrence, an increase of the fruits of the Spirit. Galatians 5.22 says this, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. And then Isaiah 26.32 says, you keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. You know, I, um, I think that as I'm getting older, I'm noticing that there are more and more things in my life to like be stressed about. Like there's money, there's I have a marriage, I have four soon to be five kids, I've got a ton of ministry responsibilities, and it's like the older I get, the more all of these things just grow. Like the babies are not gonna stop coming, baby. Like they're gonna keep coming, right? And I'm excited about that. I'm happy about that. But what this does is this presents opportunity for more anxiety, more fear, more stress constantly. But God's promise, say promise real quick. His promise to you and to I is in the midst of a crazy political climate that favors the wicked and in the midst of growing stresses in life, he says this, you keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Walk closely with Jesus. Number two, when you walk closely with Jesus, so I'm not just talking about walking with him, but walking closely with him, because there was a crowd of people that followed Jesus and followed after him, but there were 12 people who walked closely with him. Thousands of followers, but there were 12 who followed him closely, and they were the men who ended up leading the charge when Jesus left. Number two is greater favor. Second Chronicles 16.9 says, For the eyes of the Lord move to and fro throughout the whole earth that, they may, um, that he may strongly support those whose heart is completely his. If your heart is completely Jesus's, if you follow him closely, this natural thing happens where you get favor in life. Um, not just favor with God, but also favor with men. And right now, our political climate, this is God's promise, and this is actually in Psalm, if you want to take an extra note, um, Psalm 37. If you go check out thir Psalm 37, it shows kind of the flip side of Psalm 73, which is sort of ironic. But God's promise is that if you'll walk closely with him for long enough, eventually what happens is the political climate changes. And so those who are constantly following Jesus and doing their best to be close to him and honoring to him, no matter how hard it is, at a certain point, things do change and begin to favor the righteous again, okay? You find that in Psalm 73. And that favor comes to us, and it will come to us very suddenly, and we will find ourselves in a climate that favors the righteous, and we will be a part of leading the charge in that next time. And so we want to stick around and follow Jesus and, you know, adhere to his standards and stand for the things that he stands for, no matter how hard it is for as long as we can, that time is coming. Not just in the next life, but in this life. That makes sense? Okay. Say amen if it makes sense. <laughs> Number three is this. If you walk closely with Jesus, you'll experience more divine appointments and gifts of the Holy Spirit. Um, do you have the where I am, there my servant will be? Oh, yeah, John 12, 26. Where I am, there my servant will be. 
If you're friends with Jesus and you really are close with him, then you are going to naturally be where he is. Youth Venture. Anybody? You'll, be, you'll end up at Youth Venture doing a shift, all right? I'm telling you that right now. You'll be running one of these higher ground clubs that we're understaffed on, okay? You guys, anyway, I'm going to say that probably a hundred more times tonight. But you will end up where he is. And Jesus is constantly trying to make a way into people's lives and into their hearts. And so if you're friends with him and you bump up, you're rubbing shoulders with people at work, you're rubbing shoulders with kids at Youth Venture, there are naturally going to be moments of, of um, supernatural power. Whether that's praying for a healing, whether that's sharing a word of knowledge or a prophetic word into somebody's life, like those things become more regular when you are walking closely with Jesus. And we're going to talk about how to walk closely with Jesus in a minute. But you want that, right? Does anybody in here want to experience the supernatural, right? I think we all do. Um, I think that there's probably people in here who are like supernatural. Whoop, take a step back. What's he talking about? But um, there is a very normal, regular way to live out supernatural power from God. It's not all, it's not all craziness. And I think Mike and Neil are about to hit a pretty rad series <clears throat> to help explain that in a couple months. So looking forward to that. Um, number four. Oh, I love this one. Greater victory over the flesh. Oh, man. Anybody in here making mistakes? Come on, people. Oh, hallelujah. So I am one of those people that make mistakes, right? And just to be, like, totally transparent with you, I think the main mistake I make is um, my temperament. And it mostly happens, ironically enough, at Youth Venture, which is so dumb. But there are just certain kids that it's like, I'm with you, you know, five days out of the week or six days out of the week, and I'm with you at junior high group. And sometimes, man, I just, I just pop off, you know, especially Jimmy. You know, I just let it rip on Jimmy. And uh, he leaves crying. And I got to come back the next day and repent. I'm like, look, dude, I'm sorry. So victory over the flesh. I want that, right? I don't want to go an entire month at Youth Venture without yelling at somebody. That's like one of the goals that I have. And so let's do it God's way. So let's see what God's promise is about that. Galatians 5.22 says this. If you walk by the Spirit, everybody say, if you walk by the Spirit, by the Spirit. you will not carry out the desires of the flesh. You don't have to say that part. I'm just trying to keep you engaged. Um, you will not carry out the desires of the flesh. And the deeds of the flesh are clear, right? Enmity, selfishness, lust, greed. You know, we have that list like a little bit earlier on in Galatians. Um, uh, outbursts of anger is a deed of the flesh. You know, looking at stuff you shouldn't is a deed of the flesh. Uh, sleeping in when you know you got a commitment is a deed of the flesh. Dishonoring authority is a deed of the flesh, Right? All these things are the deeds of the flesh. And here's what God says. He says, if you walk by the Spirit, you will not carry out those deeds, those, those temptations that come upon you. And so what are you talking about? Imagine this. Imagine the person in your life that you respect the most. Just put them in your mind right now. The person in your life that you respect the most. Probably Shane Blayfield. All right, let's, so just keep, just put that in your mind real quick. And now... With that picture in your mind, imagine that person is with you from the moment you wake up until the moment you go to sleep every single day. Not only are they with you, but they have a supernatural ability to pay attention to every single thing that you do. Like they're literally, like their single job in life is to look at everything you do. Not only can they see everything you do, but everything that you're thinking is playing in their mind. And so your minds are joined. It's this crazy telekinesis thing, okay? Just imagine that. And imagine how differently we would all live if that were the case. Like if Pastor Mark Hoffman... <laughs> We're with me at all times. OMG, my life would be different. You know what I'm saying? And so the reality is this. He says, if you walk by the Spirit, you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. So if we become awakened to the reality that God really is with us at all times, never leaves us, never forsakes us, he sees everything we do, and he reads every single thought that we have, and we're awakened to that reality at all times, then suddenly I'm not carrying out the, <laughs> the desires of the flesh anymore because Almighty God is watching me and keeping me accountable for the things that I do. This is, I think, just the simplest way to explain it. 
he's watching always. There are consequences for every wrong you do. And one of those consequences is it compromises your fellowship with the Lord, right? You can't just, you can't just spit in someone's face and pretend they're not there and then, you know, think that they're going to be cool with you at all times, right? You know, it's possible to be rude to the Lord. He's there at all times. And he's just waiting for us to turn our hearts toward him and, and worship him. And, um, and we are going to uh, chat about that in, in a second. I got a couple books to show you. Um, number five is this. And we had some great worship tonight. But if you're walking closely with Jesus in your daily life, you're going to have more expectation and joy in times of corporate worship. Um, Psalm 84, too, says this. My soul longed and even yearned for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh sing for joy in the living God. Man, um, I have this memory of, I don't know, some of you guys were probably maybe even in kids' church at this time. It's amazing how much younger you are uh, than I. Sometimes I, don't, I, forget, I forget about that. Um, but I forget what year it was, but remember we were having every single Sunday night, like every single Sunday night we were having these worship nights and um, like 500 or 1,000 people or whatever would show up every Sunday night. And I remember at times when I'm coming to these worship, these worship nights, I would show up in the parking lot and... I would hear the worship. I'd realize I'm late, like I shouldn't have grabbed coffee, but I would hear the worship start in the distance. And when the worship started in the distance, I just remember this feeling like igniting within me where I was like, oh, I'm not there. And I would run. I was like, I didn't care who was looking at me, dude. Like from my car, I would just run to the time of worship because I knew I was just like spaced out. And that kind of makes me think of this verse. My soul longed and even yearned for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh sing for joy in the living God. If you don't have a close relationship with Jesus, then it would make sense for you to like be like whatever about worship. You know, you just kind of like come to these worship times, these songs that are glorifying Jesus and for who he is and Matt Graham just shredding. Like, you know, you come into a time like that and you're just like, whatever. You know, you probably just don't have that close a relationship with Jesus. If you're near to Jesus all throughout your week and you're making efforts to turn your heart toward him and honor him, then what happens is your heart becomes ignited with passion for the house of God. It's just, it's just something that happens. Your soul begins to long and yearn for the courts of God. And whether that's people around you worshiping or just those little moments of worship you get to have throughout the day, it's just something that happens. Um, my notes seriously got mixed up. Um, and so I'm going to actually wrap this up majorly quick, um, but I'm going to decide what I'm going to cut out. Oh, number six later on is care for the poor and outcast. So get a shift at Youth Venture. Um, be joyful and thankful. Thank you, Lord, for Youth Venture. Um, well, I guess I'm just going to cut the rest out. All right. Um, and I'll just kind of go off real quick because we're, we're 8.30, right, David? 8.30? Okay, because I want to do a little bit of ministry before we're done. Um, sorry about the awkwardness there as I'm speaking out loud, deciding what I'm going to do. But um, bottom line is this. If you pursue God, he will be there with you. At all times, he's available. I recommend this book. This is um, Michael and Diane Cook, Practicing God's Presence. I don't know how else to say it. This book changed my life. Um, I've gone through it a number of times now. Every single time I ever mentor somebody, I give this is the first thing we do, is this book. Um, I also have um, Eating from the Tree of Life, which is a devotional Mark Hoffman uh, wrote. And uh, Mark and Michael are just two of these people who you sit with them and you get coffee. And it's like, it's not just you two. It's like Jesus is there in the cough, you know, in, in the meeting. And it's just powerful. And so if you, yeah, yeah, are you sure? Okay, we'll just read it out loud. Oh, yeah, I've just pulled the slide. So um, this is part of one of the tips, but um, I don't know how I thought I was going to get through 24 slides tonight. I don't just, geez Louise. So well, tips for um, walking closely with Jesus, we'll just do this quick. So start it and just put the one where all of them are up there. I think it's like seven of them. So tips on walking closely to Jesus. Understand and obey the Bible. The Bible says uh, in John 15, he says, 
abide in me and I in you. Ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. The word abide, say abide. abide. The word abide means to adhere to standards. Okay? So abide is not some funky, weird way of like, I'm in his presence, then I'm out. I'm not abiding anymore. No, it's just you, you follow his laws and his commands and you're abiding in him. And so understanding and obeying the Bible from your heart, even when people aren't watching, this brings you into a closer relationship with Jesus. Understand and obey the Bible. Uh, number two, spend time in prayer. Um, besides going to church and being in fellowship with other believers, I think that I think being in fellowship with other people who love Jesus is the single most important um, part of our walk with the Lord. There's commands in the Bible about that. And then it's prayer. Being in communication with God, I'm not just talking about waking up at a, at a certain time and you know spending two minutes praying, but um, interacting with God throughout the day, very important. Uh, number three, do things only God knows. I originally worded this as keep secrets with God, and Mark told me to change it. So I changed it to do things only, God only knows, but I was like, Mark, keep secrets with God sounds way cooler. But... Um, Anyway, so here's what I mean by that. You know, in uh, Matthew 6, it talks about beware of practicing your righteousness before men to be noticed by them. Because when you do that, there's your reward. So, I mean, as much as I love Youth Venture, you go to Youth Venture Shift, and, you know, Bryce Stacy knows you're there. And so you get a pat on the back at some point from Bryce Stacy or from me or whatever. Hey, thank you for doing Youth Venture Shift. You know, that's great that you're serving, but that's your reward. You just got it. But... When you do something righteous that no one else sees and it's just between you and God, that creates a very deep intimacy and fellowship with him. You know, who are your closest friends? Your closest friends are going to be the people who know the most about you. That's just, you know, the people who know your deepest, darkest secret and no one else knows, that's your best friend, right? That's how it works. And so if you have things that you do for people or you, you pick up a piece of trash, whatever, um, and you just keep it between you and the Lord, and this develops deep intimacy and fellowship with him, and you find that stuff in this book too. Um, number four, develop an awareness of his presence. Let's pretend real quick. Um, I got my phone. You know what? Uh, if you're like down for it and don't, you know, you're not like, you're down to be a little lame for a second, pull out your phone. Um, so my phone, I have it in my hand. I can see it. I can feel it, okay? Um, I know it's there. I set it down back here on the stage. I don't see it. I don't feel it. But I still know it's there. So I have a sense that my phone is behind me. And at a certain point, I'm going to be able to see and feel it again, right? So, like, think about it this way. Like, we go up to camps and or, you know, times of worship here at Common Ground, like that one, thank you, Jesus, you know, where where the presence of God just envelops us and we feel like we're set on fire. It's like, he's so close. It's like, I could pray for anybody and they'd be healed or, or I'm getting words of knowledge or it being, you know, activated and they get to the spirit for the first time, you know? And then at a certain point, maybe some of those feelings start to go away. But I want to be aware of my phone because I need my phone, <laughs> I need my phone so much, it's crazy. I need it all, all day. I, I need it. <laughs> Many people try to get a hold of me, and that's, that's anxiety just one-on-one -on -one right there, right? So I need my phone, and so I'm going to be constantly aware. If you really, like, when your heart begins to fully understand how much you're in need of God, there is a natural sensing that comes. There is a natural sense of where your soul is reaching out to the Lord constantly because, um, because you know he's there. And so God never leaves you. He never forsakes you. Even if you went through something really hard, he is still there with you. He loves you. He cares for you. He's drawing you to himself. Um, be joyful and thankful um, and always pray. Yeah, we kind of talked about this a second ago. No one likes an unthankful person. It's so annoying. Okay, number six. Um, Care for the poor and the outcasts. This is very important. Get a youth venture shift. And also, uh, go do a higher ground club. You got the time for it. Okay. Also, there are people maybe here in this room who just need a friend. And God, God has a really close place in his heart for um, people who just need a friend. And if you'll just open up your circle 
and like go the awkward mile to walk across the room to talk to somebody, I think it puts a big smile on God's face. I just, it's just his heart. He just, he wants us to open up our circle for people. Um, so yeah, that's it. Um, stand up. Yeah. And band, you can come up too. If anybody would like to embark on a 30-day adventure in practicing God's presence by Michael Cook, you can come grab this. Anybody? Anybody want it? DJ? All right. Eating from the Tree of Life by Pastor Mark Hoffman. All right. Take it. Very good stuff. Uh -huh. um, why don't you just put out your hands and let's uh, ask the Holy Spirit to come. I, I really do apologize for talking so long. It's my worst ever Okay, excellent. Thank you. Take away some of the anxiety. Thank you, bro. Um, Father, we just thank you for your presence. You're here with us, Lord. And, um, Lord, you're here with us even before the music starts and before the lights go down. God, you're just with us always. You never leave, God. And um, maybe just as a group right now, and if this is you, you can kind of just echo it in your heart. Lord, forgive me for just forgetting about you and ignoring you. Um, for trying to do so much of my life on my own. Just work and work and work and make money and do ministry and do family. Lord, I just, um, sometimes I forget how much I not only need you, but how much I just love you. God, how much I adore you and desire to be with you. And Lord, each one of us in here um, wants that. Each one of us wants to have love ignited in our heart for you and to have a constant awareness of you. So I pray that over everyone here, they would experience that even in a fresh new way starting tonight and even tomorrow morning that they'd begin to look at their day as another day with the Lord. Brushing my teeth with Jesus, you know? I'm eating my breakfast with Jesus. I'm doing estimates with Jesus. I'm doing IT work with Jesus. 